Hello and welcome back to the 2023 Portland Open presented by Latitude 64. You're watching round one back nine coverage from Glendevere Golf and Tennis on Jomez Pro with me, Nate Sexton, Jeremy Colling, and Paul Ulibarri. Simon Lazat off to a hot start five under through the front nine. Not as hot as Isaac Robinson out there. This is basically his breakout event last year. Of course, it's quite different than what we're playing right now, but he is still out there doing the good stuff at six under through the front nine, which is just remarkable. But this is the easier scoring nine. Make no mistake, the back nine is about to get long, challenging, and you're just going to see. I mean, it's, I mean, these guys are going to be throwing a lot of drivers off the tee. So take a look, a lot of people in that three under range. I mean, just going through the screen, that's a good number through the front nine but it's gonna be a lot of maintenance to keep that score going on the back. Yeah, hole 10, par four, 625 up the hill. Tricky little one because of the OB on the right and that mandatory on the left. There is a guardian too, which makes you kind of have to flex it off the tee. Then you're going straight up the hill, hyzer into this green, or if you somehow make it to the left side of the fairway, you can go roller or sidearm through the trees or even all the way around. So lots of options, but main, point of this drive is to do exactly what Cole did right there. That puts you in a great spot to go up the hill. Yeah, that's going to be in that 310 to 300 range, I believe, but it's going to have some technical aspects to it. So I like this play a lot. Mm. You're going super cut, just making sure whatever you do, get get over to the left side. If you start to stand up, that OB on the right really comes into play quick. Simon, a bit unlucky to catch those trees. That's going to keep them pretty far back. Yeah, I'm pretty jealous of that roller line. It's a it's a really a powerful roller play to make sure you have enough to get around and hold the cut. Yeah. But I think clearly that's the dream shot. I mean, you could get 200 feet longer than any air oh, shot. Oh, I totally think so. I, I thought you would have gone uh, Thunderbird roller here. Cut. I wish I had the juice. I just, I'm not sure. I didn't get enough practice on this course, yeah. but I'm worried that I would not get around the Mando. Mm -hmm. Linus up first. This is... Pretty open hyzer, but then the trees towards the end really come into play. But wow. Okay. Yeah. Deal. Linus is going to be getting his first birdie of the event on the 10th hole. Cole going to find those big trees. It's a pretty blocked backhand hyzer coming in, I feel like. There's, there's not quite as much room as you might like. Simon's standstill delivery. And getting pretty much all the way up there to the left side. He's going to be circles edge-ish, I believe. Wide open putt, though, I think. He split those two trees nicely. So I think he caught a good break there to have a look. See if he can take advantage. Oh. Science, or, I mean, Calvin, Calvin, pardon me, with the overstable. This is like third bullseye birdie of the round thus far. This looked a lot closer. I didn't know he was 70. Huh. That's a pretty common aspect, pretty common challenge out here on both sides of the Glendevere. When you miss your line, those trees that are blocking the basket are usually 50 to 75 feet away. I feel like when you hit your line, sometimes you're 50 to 70 away. <laughs> yeah. That, I think that happened to me 14 times. <laughs> uh, great birdie from yeah, Simon. Yeah, very much. Great birdie from Simon. And like you said, Paul, nice open putt from out there. Is that... Uh... A little bit of chain wiggliness there, but that wasn't a good putt. You could tell that it was a not so confident release for Cole, and in the end, it does fall out the backside, and that will be a bogey. Yeah, costly unforced error. Yeah, that one hurts. How often does that happen? You you, you release it, and you knew that that wasn't where you wanted it to go. So you feel like a bad thing's going to happen. And then it's like, oh, okay, I got lucky. It stayed in. Nope, spit out. That's, yeah. the, that's the result I deserved. So Simon, Calvin, and Linus all picking up the birdie on the 10th hole. One of the easier, I think it's the fourth easiest hole in the course. So getting them when they're available. I feel like we just played this hole. 345 up the hill though and yeah. then just as straight as you can there is a right side smaller gap it's kind of the i feel like the pure line if you don't want to go right towards it it's a little bit bigger and then there's nothing into the trees if you look i think these guys might try to go 
go right at it, though. Uh, oh, oh, Simon, a little trick shot. Sweet. Wow, look at that. He is putting together a special round, looking very likely to go to seven under through 11 holes. That is just silly to me. I thought hot round would be somewhere in the six to eight range going in and thinking that he's about to get to seven through 11. Yeah. That's getting it done. Common to just hit early here and kick right and left. It's a this lot of a, trees. Yeah, and it's they do a good job of making you throw it really straight on a lot of holes here. Here's Cole. This needs to look at this thing flip. just fighting straight the whole way on that hyzer plane, but it just never really hyzered. And just a great little right and forward kicks for both him and Simon. You hit those trees square, you're probably you could be outside uh, circle one. Kind of yeah. like this. You yeah. see, you hit those trees square right in front of the basket. You're not, you have no kind of yeah, easy they're, putt. They're all at 30 feet right back there. But those kicks that Cole and Simon got real nice. Take yeah. a little ace run, maybe get in there real close. Calvin left him a little chicken chunk. Yeah, a little something to be desired there. Ah, uh, Linus. That Off stings. Low. Just yep. got the birdie, kind of starting to right the ship. Yeah. And then give it right back. Good delivery. Calvin delivers. Wasn't that a stamp he had made one time? With the pizza? Yeah, well, he's definitely done some pizza themed stuff. So you, I think your joke lands. Look how close Simon is. Wow. Just feeling like it's just like uh, kind of automatic right now for him, I feel like. Yeah. He's just stepping up and expecting birdie, and this is not a course I feel like you can really expect birdie, but he's just getting him. Simon is now Finally. solo leader. It's, it had to happen. If he, the way he's playing, finally clear the field as we look at hole 12, par three, 380. It's a flex shot kind of either way you slice it, forehand flex or backhand flex turnover type of thing. You want to get out of that center area, out into the open air, and then fade it back with the skip to reach the screen. I really like this hole because of the two options they give you. Yes. It would have been fair to put a Mando on the left side as well to make you guys, those sidearms, <laughs> think a little bit, but... but... No one will go around it, though. No, but it's still like, yeah. oh, why is that Mando there? Uh, yeah. uh, Eight under. Oh, my gosh. I don't know what's going on right now, but Simon's just getting it done. You can't draw the flex shot up any better. It skips right over the root right there. Yeah. Perfectly. Just gorgeous. Wow. Really? <laughs> okay. I, I that have says to, a lot. No, I have to admit, I was watching this on coverage and he said out of his ham, oops, wrong gap. That makes sense. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. So, uh, he, otherwise, he's just insane. It, yeah, just the most <laughs> confident dialed. player of yeah. all time. But why, if you're that dialed, he's still why? Like, you just throw it around the <laughs> it's other It's a straight side. gap. I can see what's in front of me. I'll just go through the straightest one. Yeah. Calvin, a nice shot. Very nice shot. Needs to run out straight, and it kind of is. Look at is. that. Yeah. Nice. Oh, I think he's going to love the result. He did not seem to be very pleased with the release, but inside the circle, putting for the birdie. Hmm, look good. I, yeah, I felt the same way. It just felt like that's spinning clean, probably right in. There you go. Good birdie. Get back to one over. Really not that bad of a round. It's a bad round, but place is tough very easily. You could 
go birdie list. It's a good birdie. They're popped in from 25 feet from Calvin. Yeah, I, I wasn't having a great round, at, and I finished this hole, and I was just sort of struck with this crushing weight of going, I don't, where, there's no more birdie holes. Like, <laughs> from here on out, they're pretty long. I mean, not to say that people aren't going to get them, and, you know, they're, they're possible, but I, it's a really brutal finishing stretch is what I'm trying to say. You get you get through twelve. You got six to go, but they're scarier than they are exciting. Hey Jonathan, catch! Huh? Jonathan, we're getting an anomalous critical failure on your suit. Could you please confirm status? Sorry, man. Warning. No option. Hole 13, par 4, 930 feet. Mandatory to the right for some reason, just to make it so difficult. You have to go <laughs> down through here, then there's an OB line, and then you got to swing it back left. I think this is maybe the hardest hole in the yeah, course. Yeah, the hardest hole in the course. There's not a whole lot of uh, of out of bounds until that late part, but the Mando has got to be 600 feet from the tee at least. So it's you got to get right with your drive to really have much of a play to gain any distance with the second shot. Simon going roller. Interesting play. I think this is in danger of flirting with the out of bounds. No, he's curling quick. Nice flippy disc. Yeah, I, I'm surprised the roller play out of Simon because if he's got all the power and the control to keep it moving right and to get down there in the flat. Oh, Calvin cuts down a little branch, but he's still moving pretty good. Yeah, that's that's what you're looking for. He's going to go right next to Simon's. But yeah, I'm so, those are two shorter drives than what I expected from those two. I've got an update on how many mandatories there are. Oh, great. We did a little over under on the front nine. 18 was the mark that was set. I said push. Okay. And we haven't got an answer from you two. Uh, I'm going to take the over. Over. It is over by one. It is 19 mandatories. Wow, I set a pretty good number. Yeah, that was a great number. I'm happy about that. Look at Cole going to low line. I like this. Yeah, just kind of pierce it down here. You don't really want to see much of this fade. Don't fade too much, yeah. Ooh, that's yeah, a big fade. I that's going to make it really tough to advance much. Going to be pinchy. Yeah, the number was 15, and then you get to hole 18, and there's four mandatories, yeah. and it just goes. Bloop, 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 that's, bloop. that's the ace in the hole. Do you guys, are you guys struck by the feeling as I was that this would be a good hole just with no mandatory, just going right down the middle, 930 downhill? Yeah, I, I, I would totally agree with that. I thought the mandatory could even have been flipped yes. 180. Yes. I was I down was, the fat fairway. It, but it does make a very, very difficult hole. And that is, that is super out of bounds. Wow. Bad throw, but also double Dece kick, bad yeah. break, because that shoots him out of bounds at least. It's an open hyzer from over there. First uh, bit of trouble we've seen Simon get in. And look at Cole having to go jump hut on a second shot on the hardest hole in the course. Yeah, see, that's that's where I kind of question it a little bit because you yeah. see that a lot. It's yeah. kind of you get this wasted shot if you're just a little bit out of position. Linus coming up edge of circle short on his approach. You'll have that for the par. I kind of like the hole. I like that it makes you go down to this other side just because it pushes you into a really tight spot, doesn't yeah. give it anything easy, and it is totally gettable if you want to get aggressive. Yeah. And if you just want to play safe, like doing that putt to there where Cole did sets you up pretty easy for the you're, par. You're you right. can totally play it for par if you get a more aggressive like Simon did. Yeah. He gets punished. Yeah, I don't I wouldn't say I hate it. I'm just it's a it's a I've never seen anything like it, I guess. Yeah, it is unique. I will give you that. Oh, oh, Simon. No. Oh, boy. Wow. Off the mark there on the approach distance. He's going to have a long comebacker for the bogey now. Likely to double. That was that was really pretty errant. Like, he's not that far away. I'm, I'm surprised to see him come in with that much speed. I also think they missed the mark on this with uh, just the par. I, I believe it's a par five. Yeah, I was like... 
what we were discussing is that oh Simon's oh. effort for the bogey just high. If they brought the tee back uh, towards the parking lot a little bit and make that turn a little bit more turny off the tee, mm, yeah, then this would be a legit par five with like potential opportunities for the eagle. Yeah. Even as it is a par four, there were a few birdies out there. It was a surprising birdie to get. But yeah, six players able to capture the elusive birdie here. Was there a lot of a lot of fours? Uh fifty four percent. Sounds like uh sounds like an easy par. Well or, uh, eh. yeah. Forty percent though over and and then Would that multiples be? at Sorry. multiple shots over. Would that be an easy par five then? Considered? I mean, 4.41, yeah, I guess yeah. that's kind of considered yeah. an easiest par five. But I think if you bring that tee shot back a little bit, I think that number might get kicked up to 4.7 or something where it's just kind of a good par five. Yeah. But uh, I guess I'm going to shout these birdies out because it's a good enough birdie to get the shout out. Proctor, Drew Gibson, Chandler Fry, Thomas Gilbert, Luke Humphreys, and Anthony Barella. That's a birdie you're feeling really yeah. good about. I played with Luke Humphreys. Our group actually shot the whole one under, which I thought was great. Yeah. Luke was playing blind, got the birdie, did not care. <laughs> Pretty wow. incredible. Yeah. Oh, 14, 465, double mandatory to keep you going down the center gap, but it is a low ceiling. Downhill the whole way until you get to the pin. That's just what you're looking to do. What's oh, crazy man. about this hole in particular is it's like one of the <sighs> easier gets. I feel like somehow. On, the, on the course, yeah, somehow. it's like the easiest. If you hit it, you normally kind of can slide up there for an easy yeah. look. If you just hit this gap right, not there, just to the left of that. But he got through. You know what's funny about huh. this one? Whoa. Same exact scoring average. I was going to, I wanted to go back to hole three to see how similarly it played. Same exact scoring average. No way. 330 feet versus 465. Same scoring average, 2.83. Where is this going? Mm. I think the crowd's interested in that too. You see a bunch of heads turning left. That blows my mind, Germ. That's crazy. And Simon, after the double bogey. Yeah. Aaron there, the first time we've seen any hiccup at all. And now it's uh, multiple mistakes in a row. Looking like maybe a little blister situation on the finger, too. He looked a little concerned. I think that's going to be a problem for a lot of people this week. And a decent effort there for the approach. That is a hard place to save the par. I mean, you're basically dealing with the same exact bunker trees that you're dealing with off the tee, but now you have to get up and down to save the par. Same thing that Linus is looking at, but there's a wide turnover route that he is finding, and he's finding nicely. Wow. What a great shot. Oh, yeah, that was beautiful. Good imagination there. Or the long birdie. That is a great effort chaining out left side that high up the hill. That is a long putt. Oh, what a par save. Wow. That'll right the ship. Oh, here you go. Little bit of Annie. High. And, and don't you kind of just feel like that's clearly every putt is only worth one shot, but in, in a mental way, that one's like kind of worth worth two. Coming off the mm -hmm. double bogey, you, mm -hmm. you know you're leading the tournament or yeah. near or oh, very you nearly. Yeah. You know you know you're on fire. And then it, that, that's an easy time for things to kind of start slipping away. You go double bogey, back it up with a bogey on a fairly gettable hole. Mm -hmm. I think that is a pretty important putt for his, his tournament. Oh, the putters almost went down the hill. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Calvin having some issues inside the bullseye. <laughs> Cole, unfortunately, not getting the birdie. Four pars there. Gossage and Isaac at seven under. 
Got to play with Corey Ellis. He was just making putts everywhere. It was surprising because he's just such a putt player who struggles with the putt so much. Oh, yeah, for sure. Nice easy one here. Kind of just hit a tunnel with a little height. Drift it right about five, <laughs> 600 feet if you can. Avoid avoid that golf green. And then you're going uphill over the OB to what is Completely effectively blind. an island green. Yeah. Uh, this one is a monster. 879 feet. Power players love and life but yeah look at that you gotta you, the, the first gap is no joke when i played this course i was playing it just solo and uh i when i eventually found the pin i was like this is this is a par five right and i looked up the the caddy book and it said par four and i said well this game is starting to get away from me <laughs> <laughs> pretty good tee shot there but yeah this is a completely blind approach i mean and the closest you're going to see anyone is about 400 and 10 feet um i don't think that's i don't think that's correct you can get closer you can get inside 400 yeah i played with a few people yesterday that were in about 350 wow oh my gosh what yeah. a big tee shot for such a technical shot yeah it's hard to do because you you this is going out of bounds right well, well if it's right going out of bounds left. it's going out of bounds left yeah they're, they're, where how far is that ob away wow that's ob by 75 80 yeah feet. i never i didn't really even consider that line as with the forehand i did consider that ob line as a forehand thrower if this keeps turning then that's going to be in that 350 range that you're talking about yeah Paul. yeah this is this is pretty good this is a easy pretty easy shot it's a little bit uphill with the run-up but he can see the basket from there but it's not okay it's not that open like there's some really big furs and the branches wow. of the furs kind of almost overhang the ob so it's certainly doable but it's uh, i don't know that i would use the word easy Going standstill there for for Linus, he's still going to have, I mean, my, my guess is 275, 280 to the pin. Calvin is getting aggressive. You're just trying to get over that bush there and just try to get back in bounds, and I think he's done it. Yeah, wow, wow what a shot. But you see, that was Calvin with some flip-up. Ripping. With a rocket attached to his arm, as he always does. You know, it's like, that's a crush. Yeah, but look crush. at this. This isn't, yeah, this is that's just a basic yep. um, hyzer from yep. there. Yep. Is this... I don't think it is OB. I think it's perfect. Oh. oh. Well, left. Yeah, the he distance had the, yeah, the distance was The there. distance was nice. Okay. And that's an OB you can kind of stomach. I mean, he's totally. going to be C1. Yeah, look, look at this. This is... Yeah, but very I mean, manageable shot right here. Sure. I, like, I like the word manageable more than I like the word easy if, if we're splitting hairs. Simon going very skyward with that hyzer. And he is going to hang on safe. Yeah. But you see how close he was to being short? Yeah. Like if that's if that's five feet shorter, it buries in the OB. Yep. He doesn't even move up mm -hmm. much. I yep. mean, it's like it, it can it can snowball. Yeah. Very difficult. And the only reason this hole is not the hardest hole in the course is because hole 13 exists. Yeah. But yeah, 4.36 average. I'm surprised it's not a little bit higher. Yeah, I kind of if agree. If it gets windy, I don't think that this oh, yeah. hole averages below 4.6. Cole, good par save, really. I mean, that's a score you're, you're circling. Yeah, that was a pretty putt, too. That was a little bit farther than I expected him to have and just absolutely perfect weight on it right into the center. And Simon getting the birdie. Wow, what a great birdie to get that round back on track. Good putt on 14. Yeah. And a great birdie on 15. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So good. Yeah, I mean, I think, was it 11 players? 12 players in the field with a birdie? And we just saw a, two of them. I mean, that's... Galvin, after the slow start, starting to put together a pretty good round there. Four under is not a bad score here yeah. at Glendivere West. Yeah, you can see five under still on our leaderboard, so four under certainly in play. 16's got two routes here. The, the, the drone is going the route that I did not see in my short one round of practice, but it, I think it's the better play into the screen, more open for sure. 
456 feet, low ceiling the whole way. Let's see if uh, one of the best players we've ever seen in the game agrees with you, but he's going with the straight Yeah. Route. I agree with you, Jerm, because I, I didn't play it to the right, mm -hmm. and then somebody in my group in actual play did. Like this. Simon. And it definitely seemed like the more yeah. capable route. It's just, oh, that's yeah. how you get there. And Simon just showed that's how you do it. You don't have to play with any angles. You know, you don't have to drift it from left to right to straight. It's just throw it as hard as you can with a, a semi stable disc. And this play right here, you got to play with the flip up, but then you're also dealing with the trees back there by the green and also, you know, also just overthrowing it by yeah, 50 feet. Yeah, just accidentally going super deep, but a tree kind of saves you. <laughs> Goodness, Cole. That was crushed. Look, wow. That's interesting. tough because there's kind of a lot of OB there. That's a long way to get that first little touchdown. Wow. Cool. Really interesting technical idea. Cool. Not 100%. Perfect on the execution, but look at this laser beam. Oh, I st I'll never understand how he does that. Boy, dropping it down so low, but coming out just like the most ripped spin putt you've ever seen. Yeah. Oh, no. That's going to get away a little bit, but it's, only a little bit. Yeah. It's really bark chippy in here. As you can see, the hole just kind of recently cut in. So not a lot of skip action, thankfully, on some of these uh, approaches if you're a little hot coming into the green. What a good birdie. Yeah. A little drop, too. Did you see that? Like, right when it got to the pin, it gave it a little whoop whoop. These are good scores here. Simon just bullseye again. Gosh, imagine, Essentially. If he doesn't, imagine if he doesn't take that double kick and go out of bounds back there and get that, that kind of crazy, I, against the backdrop of how he's been playing, a I, pretty incredible, weird double bogey. I just, I mean, it... A double-digit under par score on this course, it, to me, is in many ways unfathomable. Like, I cannot even yeah. imagine that in my own personal game here. There's just so many holes where I'm like, yeah, par's good. Par's great. Yep. Par's really good, actually. And so, and bogey looms everywhere, as it always does. But, man, there's just not enough birdies to get. But Simon's proven that wrong right now. And so are a bunch of other players. Seven under is just it's great. This is actually the FPO tee. Yeah, here's the tee right, right here. Right there, 430 feet, slight left to right breaker, and there's the out of bounds area right before the green as you get to this mound. There's an OB golf green long that you're fine with hitting. If, if you did, you threw a pretty good shot with a decent opportunity to sit on this hill here. But risk, reward, most of these people are gonna be taking the risk. This is not a ton of speed. Yeah. The height is so important here, and it's where the, the whole pinch in, pinches in the higher you go. Not oh. a bad break there. Yeah, you'll take that. You'd rather hit them solid than just kind of fluff. If it gets through a little bit, it's just going straight OB. Calvin driving it. Does it have the height? Does it have the speed? I think so on I, both. Yes, I like this a lot. I will... Uh, Take Calvin every single time for this shot. I mean, yeah. If there were a person who could drive 430 low ceiling with a fairway driver more accurately, I don't know who that player is. Yeah, I've not met him or seen him play. This looks nose it, yeah. up. Yeah. Not going to turn. Needs a lot of distance. Yeah. That's no. just, you know, out of your hand immediately. Yep. Oops. There is play to lay up short and just pitch over for, for par. Just got to throw this one firm. It's so, I, I think the distance is perfect because it really baits you in. Oh, my oh. gosh. Cole. That's, he threw it firm. Yeah. He definitely I threw it firm. That's a, is that a, that's a misfire. That's got to be oh, yeah. a misfire. Yeah, sure it is. I mean, it's a, it might be a stroke saver, honestly. That thing was kind of humming down yeah. the hill. I think certainly circle two if he if he doesn't hit cage there. But he also almost made a birdie. Wow. That probably looked pretty good from his point of view there. Oh, yeah. But I think that, yeah, the, the, the 430 distance, 
you, you don't, I mean, you, you factor in that's uphill a little bit, but it just baits you in. It's so hard to say, yep, I'm cool with a three here. I, I think this hole's perfect. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Like it, it asks you to throw a very difficult shot. You can sort of defend the layup play if that's what you want to do, mm -hmm. you know, but it's not so far that it kind of, there's not many players in the field who, I think almost everyone in the field could get there if they wanted to. It's a great scoring so I distribution like, as well. It's like 50% yes. par, it's a good number, but then it's got the 28 over and double over, and then it's got the 22 under. That's a that's yes. a good, yes, very good breakup. Simon going the other direction once again. He's at seven under. Now Aaron Gossage has flip-flopped. He's got the lead. Of course, that does not surprise me that he's doing well. Big forehands, big backhand hyzers. Yeah, we see Aaron Gossage on the leaderboard a lot in those situations. Almost home. Just 1,107 more feet on this par five. Double Mando to start you off. Then another double Mando taking you through this line of trees. Then it swings up left and is wrapped by out of bounds. Up these golf tees all the way back to the MPO pin among the trees. Roller's a nice option, low backhand. You'd really just like to clear the tree line in one and then do it one more time. Then you're kind of in position for birdie if you can get through cleanly both of these walls. That's a good shot for distance, but not for placement. I think he's going to be hemmed up behind some of these big Douglas firs. Should be able to make something work, but he'd like more distance, more left. I really, really like this hole. I think it's a beautiful hole. Mm -hmm. I think it plays well. This is it's, pretty left, is it not? Yeah. It's tough enough. Yeah. And the green is, is tricky. Yep. Like, even if you do power it way down there, going into that green, you're going to have to have to have some touch. Oh, going aggressive. This needs to cut. It needs to cut. Whoa. That's the second tree line. Did he just miss the mandatory? Did he miss the mandatory? I don't think so. So, okay. So, I mean, he, oh, he's OB. There's OB over there. Wait, no, he missed what? the second mandatory. Yeah, I think he's, the, yeah, the he missed the second set, set of mandatory. Oh, to the made left. the first one, missed the second one. That's, that means he threw it really quite far. He missed it to the, to the right. To the right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. Things that you I don't never think thought of, about. No, I don't think he even thought of that. That's incredibly far. But now he just goes to that drop zone. Yeah. That seems like a pretty manageable bogey or a par still. I would think so. Calvin throwing a little low both shots so far. You can see the mandatory circle in the distance. That yeah, he's got to the right stay, side of your screen. Yeah. He's got to stay right of that. And he's going to stay way short of it, unfortunately. Yeah, that's not what he was looking for and you can see the sigh of frustration it's been one of those days for linus so this is where cole's drive was that's really nice and this is looking good too oh but man. I, th I think it i think he's fine like he's through i think he's less than 400 in. yeah i think that's right around the number though i think you're right right around that 380 range you'd love to see it go through clean but i think he's still birdie very much in play this is that drop zone for simon it needs to uh -oh. hang on. Uh -oh. It's moving too far. Simon just out driving everything. Both on the tee and on the approach. He's out of bounds a second time now. And now the best case scenario is just getting up and down for the, the bogey. Wow. Not the hole that, or not the score that Simon thought he'd be taking. This is a big time Simon advantage hole. And I'm sure that he did not think that he would be in any danger of taking a bogey on it. I mean that you don't expect your roller to go seven hundred. It, it, it honestly yeah. it did. Huh? I think it it's did, probably yeah. in that neighborhood. That's amazing. After two low shots, Calvin just needed to not hit the Douglas fur there because that had the steam. But you go up two layers or two levels of incline from the bottom of that golf fairway, and he's not going to get anywhere near the pin for the birdie. Cole, though, has a great opportunity. I like the look of this. Don't wow. He's got yeah. a little piece of it. And he's not even going high speed in there. I think comfortable shot for him. He's so good. He's going to get to five under. 
we were never really talking about how great of a round Cole's playing, but if Simon does indeed take the bogey and Cole does indeed get the birdie, they're only going to shoot one shot different. Yeah. Hanging around, playing good golf. Oh, wow. Simon. That would have been such a Simon par I somehow. Mean, just like Miss Amanda Gobi nail a 90 footer. How um, many impressive shots did he just throw to take yeah. a bogey? Yeah, it's crazy. If you ever get a chance to come out and watch one of these in person, couldn't couldn't recommend another player to go watch first uh, yeah. outside of Simon Lazat. He keeps what? it fun. Did that just not go in? Are you serious? Yeah. Missed it a little bit, but that's a great bird Did he? there from Cole. It was a little right side. He pushed out on the right side. Oh, change. my goodness. It wasn't goodness. like center or anything. Oh, yeah. Bogey there for some. It was like, oh, my gosh. We're going to see a 12 under, a yeah. 10 under. Yeah. And that's how hard this back nine is. It'll get you. You can't. You cannot. Yeah. Wow. You know, relax at all. He was back 800 there. through 12 and finishes yeah. at six. I mean. Hard to say disappointing because he threw so many wonderful shots. Got the eagle back there on hole four. But eight under is the score to beat here. Five players hitting that mark in round one. I mean, if you do that a second time, you are going to have a really good advantage on the field going into the east. We are playing this course again for round two. We go west-west, east-east. There will be a cut after three rounds. Again, first ever elite series plus these points are worth a hundred and uh, it's a hundred and fifty percent. Yep. Right? Yep. Yeah. So we're normally playing for a hundred points for a winner. This week the winner will get hundred and fifty points towards that disc golf pro tour season finale. You gotta love those sweet, sweet points. Question Do you guys think now after the field has seen the course once? Are the scores going to get better in round two, or do you think this course is just playing this difficult? This is how it's going. To be. Depends on the, the wind. I think. Wind. I don't okay. think. I don't think it's going to get a lot better. I okay. think it'll be pretty similar. I, I think. Some, I think the guys brought the heat today. Uh, I can't get over you saying that you can't relax on the back nine. It's funny to me to even think that, like, that that's even possible. Like, just to just it makes me <laughs> smile to even imagine being on the back nine. Like, humdy dum. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard. I totally agree with you. Uh, thanks, guys, for joining me. Thanks, Founders Club. Having fun out here. We're going to be back tomorrow with round two. Same course, same channel. Some new players, some hot scores. See you there. <laughs>